Please remain standing and turn to page 165 for the Liturgy for Baptism. Your hymnal just should fall right open to that page. We are very pleased this morning to welcome Juniper Violet Hawk, who's the daughter of Ben and Casey Hawk, to our church family through the sacrament of infant baptism. Juniper was born on October 18th of 2017. Her sponsors are Joshua Hemble and Hope Kapiski. In grace, God called and chose the people of Israel and established with them a covenant. I will be your God and you will be my people. In that relationship, they were to be freed from sin and become a blessing to all. Then God came to us in Jesus Christ and fulfilled that covenant for all people. Through Christ's life, death, and resurrection, God made for us a new covenant of grace. We come before you with the joy of God to claim the promises of your covenant. Our Lord Jesus Christ instituted baptism as a visible means of entry into the new covenant. Baptism is a gift of God. In this sacrament, through grace and the power of the Holy Spirit, we are united with Christ, are cleansed by his saving work, enter into the fellowship of the church, and are called to a life of faith and willing obedience. Those of you baptized into Christ Jesus, how were you baptized? Into his death. We were buried with him through baptism into death so that as Christ was raised from the dead, to the glorious power of God Almighty, we too might be raised to live a new life. In, in baptism, children also share in the benefits of our Lord's redeeming work through God's grace and the faith of parents and of the church. For God's promises to us and to our children. Now addressing the parents and sponsors. As you present yourselves before God and this congregation, we call upon you to profess your faith. Do you believe in God as your creator and loving Heavenly Father, in Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, and in the Holy Spirit as your comforter and sustainer, according to the Holy Scriptures? Lord, make us one with all your children as we profess our faith, saying, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to death. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And again for the parents and sponsors. Do you in this faith turn away from sin, evil, and selfishness in your thoughts, words, and actions? And do you intend to participate actively in Christ's church, serving God all the days of your life? I do. Relying on the power of the Holy Spirit, do you promise to lead your child by prayer, instruction, and example toward that time when she can by grace confirm her faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and commit herself to the life and work of the church? for the congregation. Do you receive, receive and affirm this child of God as a member of this congregation and accept your obligation to love and nurture her in Christ? We do. Please be seated.
thank you, gracious God, for the gift of water which you have created and given to us as a sign of life. We recall with gratitude how you led your people from slavery to freedom through the waters of the sea. And we rejoice in the gift of the Holy Spirit at the baptism of your Son in the waters of the Jordan. And we praise you for opening up to us the way of eternal life through his death and resurrection. Now, send your spirit upon Juniper, who receives the water of baptism today so that she may become a living, growing, and active member of your church, rise to new life, and to be led and nourished by your word and sacrament, and share in your eternal blessings. Amen. Give to these parents and sponsors the strength that with love and understanding they may guide to Christian maturity the young life entrusted to their care. Amen. Juniper Violet Pop. Into the death of Jesus, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now, through God's grace and the pouring out of the Holy Spirit, you have been brought into the covenant. Therefore, live yet not you alone, but Christ live in you, and the life you now live, live by faith in the Son of God who loved you and gave himself for you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. <laughs> Thank you. 
Good job. Hey, buddy. You can have a seat now. You did so good. Wow. I, yeah, I don't know if we have any other kids want to come down for the children's message or not, but... Um, <gasps> hey, were you? Yeah. Well, it's so wonderful to see all of you today. It's such a joy uh, on Music Sunday. We get to hear everybody sing and all these babies in church. Um, so when you're in the car with your parents, have you ever noticed that... Is there any, like, certain song that comes on and they reach over and they turn up the volume? Anybody do that? Anybody does that in their car? What about you guys? Anyone that you reach over? Okay. I probably won't even know the name of the tunes that you turn up. <laughs> yeah. What, what is it? Um, I only turn up Nirvana songs. Nirvana songs. Well, there you go. Yeah. Anybody else? Huh? Brooklyn? You don't want to admit to anything. All right. Okay. What's that? Caleb. Caleb. Okay. All right. Uh, for me, it's 70s rock and roll. Uh, eagle. Yeah. See, I'm getting a lot of love right now. Um, yeah. You know, that stuff comes on and I just have to turn it up. Well, the re why, why, why do we turn it up loud? So what, what's the reason for turning it up loud? Oh, because we like it so you can bop out. You can jam. You can jam. That's right. Well... You know, it's neat because you hear that, and it uh, brings back memories and brings, it brings up things. And, and today on Music Sunday, that's one of the joys of the music of our faith lives as well, because we sing those songs. You know, I looked out there, and while uh, we were singing Zacchaeus, you wouldn't believe the number of people out there that were doing the hand motions right along with everybody else, because those are our faith jams. Those are our faith songs. And uh, so thank you for participating today. Uh, to help celebrate the joy of music that's in our lives and in our lives of faith. All right. Junior choir stay. Everyone else may go.
Our scripture reading today is the 23rd Psalm, a Psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is the word of the Lord. Yesterday, Kim and I walked down to Sunset Park, which with, seems like a good chunk of the rest of the town was down there as well, and everybody was out and soaking up the sunshine. Thank you, Lord. We were ready for it. It wasn't just the human beings that were out, though. There were also all kinds of critters. There were turtles everywhere. But the neatest part of our walk was we walked through the tall grass that surrounds those new retention ponds that the rotary has put in to reclaim Little Lake. And I've never seen so many frogs. The frogs were everywhere, and they were singing their hearts out. Amphibian choir practice. (laughs) So here we are today with an opportunity to sing our hearts out as well. Today is a time for us to soak up the sunshine of the Spirit. You know, our lesson today for the 40 Challenge are some of the best known words in all of Scripture, the 23rd Psalm. You know, the 23rd Psalm is without question the most often read passage at funerals and memorial services. And that speaks to the power of these thoughts and these words. But friends, this psalm is really not about death. It is about life, about abundant life, about gr- abundant grace-filled life, where we find deep intimacy with God who cares for us as a shepherd who cares for his sheep. The 23rd Psalm is about living a life in trust of God. I think we find this psalm so meaningful because it communicates that in all of the things that we face, even in our most physical needs, the deepest threats that we feel may harm us, and yes, even in the face of death and loss, God's faithfulness and God's goodness is sufficient. The basic truth of the 23rd Psalm is that God is more than adequate in the face of any threat that comes in life, and that is a declaration of confidence. Confidence that as we abide in God, we can face anything that life may bring us. A confidence that in our daily living, which is within, can be within ways of peacefulness and happiness. How sad it is that too often we do not live our lives with confidence. We scurry from one crisis to the next, from one meaningless longing to another. Very often we are consumed by anxiety and by uncertainty. I know far too many people who walk this earth waiting for the other shoe to drop, failing to enjoy all the blessings that we have arrayed before us. So I invite us today in this time together, in this time of worship, take comfort in the music of this Sunday. As we listen to these anthems of faith, as we sing our own hymns of praise, let us be reminded that the Lord is our shepherd, and he provides what we need. Amen. I'd like to take the opportunity to uh, offer my appreciation and my heartfelt thanks to all of you, all of the, uh, the cards and the messages and the texts and all the ways that I have felt an overwhelming sense of love and support as I've been recovering from surgery. Um, it has truly touched my heart, and truly humbled me. I've also learned, I've learned about and felt that love. I've also learned that, that uh, you know, the care meal that Ed Klein brings to you? Wow, I would have scheduled this surgery a long time ago. 
but thank you. It is a blessing to be part of a, of a church family who loves us and care for, cares for us in the joys and in the struggles of life, and I am deeply appreciative. This morning, you'll note in your uh, bulletin that there is an envelope, and that we want you to take that opportunity. We have been talking about supporting the Iowa's Clinic and the other mission opportunities of the church, and so that will be an envelope that will be available for you to be able to make those gifts as we discussed them last week. At this time, let us worship our Lord with our gifts and our offerings. Gracious God, we thank you for this opportunity to be in worship today with you. In the beauty of this day, the beauty in this life of spring surrounding us, and the beauty of our friendships and family, the love that we feel, we thank you especially this day for Juniper. What a gift she is in our lives. And Lord, we pray for your blessing to be upon her family and upon her as she grows and becomes the person of faith that you have called her to be. Gracious God, we lift up to you those in our church family and in the world who are in need of your special care. Uh, we lift up especially and are grateful for uh, those who had surgery this week, Ross Chapman and Kathy Kaczynski, and we pray for their continued recovery. Lord, be with us in this time that we may draw closer to you, that we might go out and serve you in this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated.
Can I get an amen on that? Amen. You know, we are so blessed. Week after week, we have adults and young people and children who take the time to bring their voices together to sing their praises to God. I know I speak for all the congregation, to all of you who participate in this. It is such an important part of our life of faith, and it is such a blessing to us. So to all of our choir members, and to the lovely Miss Kim, thank you for all you do. So let us all now join all of the voices in this room together as we stand and sing hymn number 47 in the Renewal Hymn Book.
Go now with these psalms and hymns and thanksgiving in your heart. And may God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and abide with you both now and forever. Amen.